My name is Laverne Joseph. I am the president and CEO of Retirement Housing Foundation. Retirement Housing Foundation is a national nonprofit related to the United Church of Christ, providing housing and services all across the country for older adults, limited income families, and persons with disabilities. RHF began in 1961. It was the dream of two United Church of Christ clergy and a layman who wanted to address a need. They began with a vast sum of $7,000 and a vision. And through lots of hard work, lots of support from the federal government and private agencies, through providence and angels, as my predecessor Clark Harshfield used to say, we've grown to the point now that today in 2012, we have 166 communities in 25 states, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. There are almost 18,000 persons who call an RHF community home, and that number continues to grow. It's been a wonderful mission, and it continues to grow, not only by new construction, but also by other organizations joining for the benefits of the system, and also by the preservation projects that we do to make sure that organizations have their affordable housing preserved. We not only provide affordable housing, we also provide skilled nursing, assisted living, and what we call market rate housing, which provides a continuum of care for persons who need those in various communities around the country. For our 50th anniversary in 2011, we produced a book called In Their Own Words. We invited residents and team members to write about what the RHF mission meant to them. And there were over 800 submissions, and the best were chosen and put in this book, which was widely distributed. I'm sure if you'd like to have a copy, you simply write to uh, RHF or send a message to our uh, website, and we will, in fact, send you a copy free. But it tells you what it means to be living in an RHF community or working for an organization like RHF. We have almost 2,800 team members that work with us all across the country, and we also have almost 18,000 residents who live in our communities. Over the years, we have received significant support from the Department of Housing and Urban Development, but one of the things that I've come to realize is that we now have to rely more on private contributions. We need your support because there is so much more to be done. Everyone deserves a safe, secure, affordable place to live. When I became the president and CEO of Retirement Housing Foundation in 1987, our symbol was three little houses. People used to kid us about being the monopoly houses because in fact the symbol looked like monopoly houses. And I said we needed something that was more reflective of who we were as an organization. Our then public relations director had a friend in a firm who worked on these kinds of symbols. It turned out later it was the same firm who did the AT&T World, the globe with the blue stripes through it, and they created this symbol uh, uh, for us. Some people call it a snowflake, but it really is a series of houses and apartment buildings stretching to the four corners, represents our the distance of our communities, which are from Honolulu on the west to the Virgin Islands on the east. And the houses have open doors because we want our communities to be welcoming places to live. And then the whole thing is joined together by the cross because we are a faith-based organization and that's part of the motivation for what we do. We believe that everyone is a child of God and regardless of race, creed, color, ethnic origin, or anything else that we talk about to distinguish ourselves, we believe that everybody deserves a safe, secure, affordable place to live. And that is our mission, to provide a place where people can live their life to the fullest.
RHF is a national nonprofit. We're sometimes called social profits because of the difference that we make in the lives of our country. One of the differences that uh, RHF residents have made over the last 10 years is through the HANDS program. HANDS means Helping Angels National Donated Support. And through this program, many of the residents, in fact, last year, 3,700 of them, devoted their time and their talents to knitting, crocheting, and quilting blankets and scarves and hats and gloves. And those items go to community shelters for persons who have been abused, to children's hospitals, to other community service agencies. And last year alone, there were 23,000 articles that were made through the HANDS program. So our residents not only receive through being part of the RHF community, they are excited and love to give to others. One of our residents, Elsie Dixon, makes 500 quilts a year. And some of them go to the persons who are in our armed forces in Afghanistan. And I've seen some wonderful letters from our uh, service personnel who write to Elsie and tell her what a difference it makes to re have received an item like this because it represents the love that we have for our service people who help to keep our nation safe. Many of RHF's communities were built under the HUD 202 program. That's a Department of Housing and Urban Development program which started more than 50 years ago. It provides housing for older adults and persons with disabilities who are at 50% or less of the median income. If they meet that qualification, then they pay 30% of their income as their share of the rent and the balance is made up through a subsidy from the federal government. Now the numbers of seniors are increasing, but sadly the numbers of units have decreased substantially. Back in the late 70s and early 80s, the department was funding more than 20,000 units of housing a year. That has diminished over the years to the point where in 2012 and 2013, no new units are being considered for funding, in spite of the fact that the persons over 65 years of age are expected to double by the year 2030. In fact, the Association of Retired Persons estimates that for every vacancy there is in a HUD 202 today, there are 10 persons on a waiting list to get into that community. Now, one of the things that we need to do as providers and as residents, as staff, is to be advocates. Writing letters, telephone calls to members of Congress to let them know how important this program is. It's also a good investment for government because we estimate that for people living in a HUD 202 with services, they can live there and it will cost government 25 to 30 percent of what it would cost government if those persons were to live in a nursing home under a Medicaid program. And for persons who need services with very limited income, that is the only choice, a Medicaid program. A typical person living in one of our HUD 202s lives on Social Security, sometimes a small pension, but usually Social Security. And we've had numerous residents tell us that they had not bought clothes for five years, they had not really eaten well, uh, they had not taken their medications in the quantity that they were, the doctor directed them to take until they came to live with us. It's a quality of life issue in our nation. We hope that you will want to help RHF fulfill its mission because there are so many people who need the housing and services that we provide. 
Over the years, we have received significant support from the Department of Housing and Urban Development, but one of the things that I've come to realize is that we now have to rely more on private contributions because of the fiscal crises that we have in our nations and our states. So I'm hoping that people will support this mission because it does make a difference. Our books are wide open, we are credible, we have a great history, and wherever I go for a celebration for our 50th anniversary or for a dedication of a new property, the leaders in the community tell us they want us to do more. We need your support because there is so much more to be done. Everyone deserves a safe, secure, affordable place to live.